Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools. On today's episode, we are tiling this Mondo oven. And if you want to learn how we tile over a rounded surface like this, keep on watching. Let's start. Oh, and this will be a beautiful, sexy beast. Now this large behemoth is actually manufactured by Woodstone, which is one of the largest pizza oven fabricators in the entire world. Now they obviously specialize in large scale commercial grade ovens, but they do provide plenty of options for residential use as well. Now if you are interested in checking out their amazing lineup of ovens, I will make sure and leave a link in the description box below. Now, as you can see, this is a very unique surface because it's actually a concrete base and formwork on the inside, which covers and encapsulates all of the heat. However, they put over an entire fabric system and then this framework. Now, we have to actually tile over the surface, but first, we have to put a concrete underlayment over the entire thing to solidify this product. Then we can tile. So, let's get to it. Now the whole premise of this video is obviously how to tile a rounded surface. So your project might not need this next step. And if you don't, lucky you and just skip over a few minutes. But if you do, this is a very valuable step to know. Now we are specifically encapsulating this mesh fencing with mortar mix. Now this specific mortar mix is from Rapid Set because it sets within 15 minutes. And that is a true statement because this stuff hardens extremely quickly and you can actually feel the heat coming off of the product as you're applying it there because it's curing so quickly. So just note to self and know that if you do need a little extra working time, you can always get some by adding a bit more water to the mix. Now the product is very easy to apply. All I'm using really are my hands as well as a six inch knife to spread it evenly and consistently all the way across the surface. Just make sure you lay a tarp down first because it does get a little messy. Now in the end you will have something that looks like this. Yes, it's so beautiful to look at. It's a bit rough to the touch as you can see and it did become a bit cumbersome to try and make it as smooth as possible, but that's where our next step comes into play. And as you can see, solid as a rock. And that's all we're looking for right now. Now after I let the mortar set for approximately an hour, I then took my grinder and some 25 grit sandpaper and went over the entire surface just to knock down some of the high spots. Now the real key to getting this surface as smooth as possible is some thin set. Now this isn't fast drying thin set like the mortar because we're gonna let this dry overnight. However, this gives us a very nice smooth finish compared to the mortar. Now it's because we're able to really work in those small crevices that we really couldn't do much about with the mortar because of the fact that we had a very small minute time period to work with the mortar, as well as the fact that that is more of a structural base and this is more cosmetic base. As you can see, that side is very smooth compared to the other side. Now, let's do the rest. Now, as we did with the mortar, the only tool that we use for this entire surface is a six inch knife. Worked out perfectly and you're able to incorporate and encapsulate this whole oven very easily with just a six inch knife. Now, the next day, as you can see, it is rock hard and solid as can be. It might not be perfectly smooth, which is totally fine because it's a lot smoother than what it was before. However, if you do have some high spots that you want to potentially reduce down or smooth out, I take my grinder and I'm actually using a diamond blade to remove some of the excess mortar that was just a little too thick in a couple spots. As for the vast majority of most tile projects, you wanna start from the bottom up, which is just the way we're gonna be doing it on this project. Now, the real tricky part about this surface is the fact that it's rounded, obviously, so therefore, you want to use a tile that can really fold and take shape of the surface you are applying it to. Now, as for the tile that we are using on this project, it is actually a one by one mosaic tile, as in one foot by one foot sheets, or one inch by one inch individual pieces of tile. 
This really allows us to take shape and really move around the curvature of the oven itself. Now you could go with a smaller size tile, which does have advantages and disadvantages, which I will be discussing further. However, I would not suggest going any larger than a one inch by one inch tile. And as for the main reason why I suggest that is because it just makes it a bit more cumbersome the larger the tile you select. So please keep that in mind when you are selecting tile for your rounded surface. As for the application process, I'm not using your normal thin set trowel. I'm actually just using that six inch knife that I used previously because you're able to apply a very small, thin, even layer of thin set as you're going across the surface and you really don't need a lot of thin set for tile like this. Now for this entire project, I'm only using two different types of shims. The large blue ones are called horseshoe shims, and these small white ones are specifically called wedge shims. Now both these shims act in very different ways, however, I love both of them, and I'll be getting into more detail as to why later on. But first, let's get to cutting. For a project like this, you definitely want a good wet saw with diamond blade. And the specific angle that I'm cutting here, in all honesty, is just a guesstimate and an approximation as I'm working myself around the oven. Now trying to cut mosaic tile like this at an angle is not easy. However, a table saw like this definitely makes life a little bit easier. So just keep that in mind. Now as I'm working my way around, that angle actually works out quite well and you can gauge it based upon the bottom of the tiles and how they line up with the tiles below it. If they don't line up and you can't configure both sheets together evenly with the bottoms as well as the sides matching up, that means that the angle of the tile needs to be cut at a different angle. Quick tip, I love these shims. Yes, these shims are so versatile. They're called wedge shims and you're able to do them vertical as well as horizontal as well as double them up as you can see right here. So it's a perfect, very versatile shim that I highly suggest using if you do tile work. As for your project, if you do have a large opening like this and you want to tile over the top of it, just keep in mind that even if the tiles don't line up perfectly at the very end, you're always easily able to adjust them pretty seamlessly due to the fact there's so many tiles there and you can slightly adjust the distance between each tile to have a perfect center point. I allow the first two sections to dry overnight and then I proceed to the third section. Now this is actually where it got a little bit more tricky and I definitely made a mistake. Now specifically my mistake was that I put the sheets on without the cut section. Now this is because I thought I was just going to save a little bit more time and energy doing it this way because I can wrap the whole surface with my five tile sheets and then proceed to coming back and filling those sections. However, I definitely found out pretty quickly that trying to fill all these sections with small pieces definitely was very time consuming and I wouldn't suggest doing it this way. We all make mistakes in life and hopefully you can learn from mine in order to save yourself a bit more time. Note to self. And there you have it, third row completed. It's looking pretty snazzy as you can see and it's been a lot of work, a lot of small sections, but it's looking really good. Now as I work my way up this oven, the one thing you really have to think about is that the curvature of the oven changes more drastically as you get higher up, and therefore the angle of your tile has to become more drastic. Think about it this way, the first row was a full sheet, the second row was a full sheet with an angle, the third row was five full strips with an angle, the fourth is with three full strips with a more drastic angle, and what do you think what's gonna happen at the very top? More drastic. Okay, now we made it finally to the top. Now we have a couple scenarios we could do it this way, however, it really kind of screws up the pattern because it's rounded and therefore these tiles are just a little too big for this round of a surface. So I'm gonna be doing more this style where it's actually a full row and then some type of a diagonal cut adjacent to it, just like we did here, but just more cuts. Yay. 
Now, as you can see, I wasn't lying when I said more drastic because this alone is just one full row with a more significant angle on each section. Now, luckily for me, the waste factor that I had on the adjacent rows below this was actually the vast majority of the rows that you're seeing right in front of you. Now, I did have to make a few cuts, especially as I was getting towards the tail end, but the nice thing about this is the fact that all those angles you see there are the same exact angles that I cut just turned around. A bit confusing, and if it doesn't make sense, please leave a comment in the description box below, and I will make sure to answer said question. I spent a good 12 hours tiling this bad boy today, but before we leave, always make sure to clean up your grout lines. Yep, it's a lot easier now than tomorrow when it's fully hardened. And now I know what you're thinking, Brent, the last thing I want to do when I spend 12 hours of tiling in a day is to then go back and clean up all of my grout lines. Yes, I know. In all honesty, I did not clean up all of my grout lines the day of, and I did have to clean up a few more the day after when it was fully hardened, but just keep that in mind, and if you can clean them up the day of, please do so, and do yourself a favor. Now we are fully cleaned up now and as you can see there might be some areas in which you still see thin set but they are behind the tile at least where the grout is going to be so you don't have to worry about seeing them now let's get to grout now there are obviously copious amounts of grouts to choose from however on this project i went with spectralock pro premium grout from Laticrete. Now specifically with this product, it is a two-part epoxy type grout, which means it's basically gonna give you extreme durability, especially when we're talking about exterior use. We have exterior use, we have sun, we have rain, we even have extreme heat because it's on an oven. Now it's not that extreme just due to the fact that the oven itself does not actually get hot except for right around the mouth of the oven itself, but I'm looking for an extremely durable grout to last for years with all these factors into play, and that's why I chose this grout. With the two-part epoxy, you mix up the epoxy first, and then you mix in your grout pigment. Now there's plenty of grout colors to choose from, and this gray I felt perfectly complemented the gray undertones of the tile. Yes, well, I didn't choose the grout or the tile, but you know what I'm getting at. As for the application of the grout, I still always suggest working your way from bottom to top, making gravity work for you, not against you. As for the tool that I'm using there, it's just your normal stiff rubber grout float, and I proceed to spreading and smoothing out the grout into all those crevices as much as humanly possible. Now, we finished off the first bucket, and as you can see, it's drying nicely. Now the directions say that we should be letting it dry for approximately 20 minutes before we start our first wash. So we let this section, at least the middle section, dry for approximately 20 minutes. Then we'll work our way over and then we'll complete the grout system. So let's start the first wash. If you haven't worked with epoxy grout before, please keep in mind making sure you clean the grout thoroughly within the appropriate time frame of the directions. If you do, it'll turn out like this. Now, as you see, that is a very nice finish. I'm loving that. Even the corner over here looks super good. Now, we just have to do the rest. Epoxy grout does dry extremely quickly compared to other grouts, and therefore making sure it's clean properly is very important, especially if you don't want the headache of trying to clean it afterwards. This stuff is a nightmare to try and clean if you keep it on too long, so please keep that in mind when we're working with epoxy grout. As you can see here, at a certain point, I did get tired of applying this grout via float, so I just started using my hands to basically cover the entire surface with grout and then come back with the float. That way, I'm able to completely and easily apply all the grout to the surface first and then coming back around and pressing it into the grout lines with my float. Best of both worlds. 
Once the oven is fully grouted, I then proceed to using their final wash solution. I mix it in with a clean bucket of water and then go over the entire surface once more just to clean up all those small particles that were left behind from the first wash. But guess what? After we have that taken care of, we are done! Life always presents challenges and this was a unique challenge because trying to tile a rounded surface like this was definitely a bit cumbersome. But guess what? I absolutely loved being a part of it and the fact of the matter, I feel extremely lucky and proud to be a part of this project because of where this oven is located. Yes, it is at the Chihuly Garden and Glass Museum in Seattle, Washington, right underneath the Space Needle. And if you don't know who Dale Chihuly is, he is a world-renowned glass Blower, who is responsible for some of the most beautiful pieces of art that I personally have ever seen and the fact that I was a part of tiling this oven was extremely rewarding and one project that I am truly proud of and is one beautiful sexy beast. Oh yeah.